Hi, my name is Amy Ash and welcome to this tutorial video where I'll be showing you how to set up a basic displacement shader in Arnold and Maya. So before we start, I want to show you a little trick that helped me on this. And this is to prevent your Hypershade editor crashing Maya when it's trying to generate previews of very, very large files. So we're going to go to Windows and General Editors and Script Editor. And in here, you want to paste in this text here. So it's render thumbnail update false. And then you can execute. And that will help Maya just be a little more stable when it's trying to preview maps in the Hypershade editor. So here we are in Maya. Uh, I've just imported all of the meshes from a texturing XYZ pack into here. Um, and then applied to them a AI standard surface shader. Uh, with a value, uh, an albedo value of 0 0.1 applied to it, but it just makes it a little easier for us to be able to kind of see the displacement details once we apply them. And the roughness itself, if we look in here, is set to 0 0.5. Um, there's a separate one for the head itself, so I'm going to rename this skin so we know which one it is. And then in the background, I have an AI Skydome light with one of the HDRIs from a texturing XYZ pack applied to it. And then I've just got a couple of cameras. I've got one for full, which is this one. And then I have a close one so that we can see the detail a little bit better later on. And if we go back to full and render this, then we can see how it looks. So I'll come up to here, click IPR render and give it a moment. So there we have it, there's the head to set up as standard. There's no displacement detail applied to this at all right now. So that's what we need to do. So I'm going to close this. Now, first thing I need to check is the subdivision is correct on this. So I will come into here and drop down smooth mesh. So you wanna make sure that use preview level for rendering is off and then come down to Arnold and scroll down a little bit and you should find a subdivision menu and you want to set this to cat clock. Iterations can be on about three and adaptive error about two. Okay, so with our head selected, I'm gonna to come up to the Hypershade editor, click here to open this, and then go up to graph and graph materials on selected objects. This brings up our skin shader, which is again, just an AI standard surface shader. And the, one of the nice things about Maya is that you can drag and drop maps directly from Windows straight into the Hypershade editor here. So I'm going to select this XYZ disk multi-channel mid 50 map, click, drag it into here, and it sets our nodes up for us automatically. It will take a moment for a preview to appear here because it's a very large map. When it does, if we have a look at this, just bring this slightly bigger. Now the thing is here is the mid value is indeed set to 50. This means that it will inflate the entire mesh. So I can show you what that will look like if we drop in a displacement shader. So I want to come in here, press tab, type in displacement, select that. And we can delete this because we don't need it and hook the out up to the displacement of our standard surface shading group out here. And then what we can do is take the red channel from here and plug it into displacement. Now, if I do a good render at this point, we can see that the entire mesh is inflated. And obviously this is a very ugly result that we don't want. So what we need to do is add an offset to that displacement map. If we come back into the hyper shade editor and we can remove this connection for now. And let's give this a little bit of space. Now, what I'm going to do here is use Arnold nodes. You can use standard Maya nodes as well. I prefer to use the Arnold nodes because I come from using Arnold and Houdini. Uh, so these are the nodes that are more familiar to me. So first one I'm going to drop down uh, is a subtract node. I'm going to press tab and type subtract. And we get the AI subtract there. And what this does is it subtracts the value of input two from the value of input one. So we want to take our out color from here and plug it into input one. And then again, it will take a moment for this to calculate. 
And once it has done, what we want to do is go to input two, click on here and put in a value of 0 0.5. So what that's done is it's taken all of those mid values down to black. So now if we hook this up, taking again the R into displacement here and do a quick render. We can see that that's looking a lot better, relatively. Obviously the levels here are a bit off. He looks very ugly still. So that's what we need to work on next. So again, I will close this. Let's delete this connection again. And the next thing I want to put down is a global multiplier for the displacement. So again, press tab, type in multiply. And we want to select the AI multiply, this is there. And again, this is quite simple. It's multiplying the value of input one by the value of input two. So if we take the out color and plug it into input one, and then we want to leave the input two on white, which is a value of one. So what I want to be able to do next is be able to control the strength of each channel in the displacement map. So if I expand the out color here, we can see we've got the R, G, B channels and different information is included on each on texturing XYZ maps. So what I want to do to do this is add in a layer RGBA node. So I'm going to again press tab, type layer RGBA and select that and drop it down. And then what we want to do is take the output of each channel and plug it into a different input. So we need to expand these inputs and I'll take the red there and plug it into the red input. Then I'll take the green, but I again want to plug, plug this into the red input of the layer RGVA node. Now you'll notice there's not another input for input three. So we can take this blue, drag it up to here, select other, and then we'll get this input selection where we can expand input three here and select input three R. And if you want to make this look a little neater and a little clearer, we can use this button here so we can see all of our inputs. A good thing to do at this stage is if we look at our uh, layer RGBA node, we can set this up quickly. So we can expand layer three here and enable both and name each layer. So we want red, green and blue. And then we're able to control the strength of each channel independently. So let's just plug this back into our displacement shader first so we can see what's happening. And what we want to do is because we've plugged each one into the red here, into the red channel, we only need to export the red channel from here. So we can take that, plug it into our displacement and then let's do a render and see how that looks. So here we're getting exactly the same result as before, which is uh, exactly what I was expecting. And what we want to do is come into here and then we can start to play around with our values. So again, selecting the layer RGBA node, we can take all of these down to zero. And then we can bring them back in one by one. So if I give this one a value of 0 0.1, Then we can see our main displacement coming in for the skin. So then we want to start adding some tertiary details to this. So let's come into the green channel and add in a value of 0 0.1. And then for our micro details, again, let's add in another 0 0.1 just there. And now he's starting to look much better, much more human, much more like skin should look. So what I'm going to do in here is switch to our Close camera, let's run IPR again and see how it's looking close up. So I can see here, we're starting to get some really nice details in here, but for me, I think we want to boost some of the tertiary and micro details because once we apply subsurface scattering to all of this, then it will flatten it out quite a bit. So again, come back into the hypershade. Selecting that layer RGBA node. 
and let's set this to 0 0.2. And zero point two here, and maybe that's a bit strong. But once you start shading, then you still have that ability to dial it in with extreme accuracy and see how it's responding. So that's all very good. And now we've got our displacement working. But this is just on a straight recreation of the head scan that texturing XYZ did. What if you've done your own? model and you've got your own sculpted detail in here that you need to apply using a displacement map. How would you go about doing that? Well, let's have a look. Okay, so I've got here the head that came with the texturing XYZ uh, V-Pace pack. And let's say that I have been sculpting this and I want to make some more edits to it. So I've decided that this guy is going to look better with a bunch of texturing XYZ logos all over his face. So first off, I'm going to divide this a few times. So we've got resolution to work with. Then I've got my alpha selected here with the texturing XYZ logo. I'm just going to take the focal shift down to minus 100 there so we don't get any fall off on that. And I'm going to start putting some, some logos on his face. So let's put one here. We'll put one on his cheek there. You never have one on his cheek. That's right, his chin, little one. Yeah, let's put one here and one here. See, it looks way better. And then what I'm going to do is, firstly, uh, I'm going to take this down to res1 because you can see it has had an impact on this one. So we want to export this geometry now. Uh, so I will do that and save it in here. And then I'm going to go to Z plugin and come down to Multimap Exporter. And I'm just going to check my settings quickly. So I've got Displacement turned on here and I'm going to come down to Export Options and click on Displacement Map. So here I have it set to Subdiv Level 1, which is what we want. We want that. That's the subdivision level we want the Displacement Map to be generated from. Um, I don't have Adaptive on, but you can have it on. It's just a bit slower, but sometimes more accurate in detailed areas. Uh, I have Smooth UV turned on because that's what Subdivision in Maya uses. Um, and then there is 3-channel, 32-bit, EXR, and I've set DV subpix to 2. If this was a final asset on a production, I might set that to 4, but in this case, I'm just going to leave it at 2. Mid, I'm leaving it 0 0.5. Scale, I'm leaving it 1. Intensity, I'm going to leave it 1. And then I click on Create All Maps. And let's just save this in here. and click save and then it will take a little while to generate. Okay, so two minutes, one second, it's not too bad. The other thing I just need to quickly point out was that I did have Flip V turned on here. This is really important because obviously um, ZBrush flips the V coordinate. So you need to flip it back when you're exporting your map. Otherwise it will come up the wrong way around um, in your UV space when you load it into Maya. Before we move back into Maya, I just want to explain why I export displacement maps from ZBrush with a mid value of 0 0.5. So this map here has a mid value of 0, which I could take into Maya and plug into the shader without having to add an offset to it at all. Um, so that would, in theory, streamline the process. However, because it's a 32-bit EXR which supports negative values, there's a lot of information in here that I can't necessarily see when I open the file. Um, so any of these areas that are black, that are fully black, still hold a lot of information, but I can't necessarily see it, so it makes it harder to edit if I need to. So it's not as common as it used to be, but every now and again we do edit displacement maps in 2D. Um, we might want to take it into Marieve and, and edit it on the model. And exporting with a mid value of 0 0.5 gives us a much more balanced image to work with where we can see all of the values a little more accurately. And if I put a levels on this, you can see the extra amount of information that is visible to us. So that's the reason why. Okay, so we're back in Maya and this is what our render currently looks like. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, delete this head mesh and then I'm going to import the edited one. 
So I want to select this edited one here, import that. Now we need to set this mesh up again just a little bit. So first thing first, I'm going to drag it into the head meshes uh, group there. And then again, under Arnold and subdivision, I want to turn on Cat Clark, set this to three and set adaptive error to two again. And then I'm going to right click, assign existing material and skin. Then I can open up the Hypershade ed Editor again. So first of all, we need to bring in our new displacement map. So again, we can just click and drag this straight into the Hypershade Editor. And the process I'm going to follow is much the same as before. So first node I'm going to put down will be a subtract node. I've got the out color to input one and then in input two again we want to put a value of 0 0.5 next we're going to put down a multiply out color into input one we'll leave input two as one for now so now we have our displacement map with the mid value corrected. So what we want to do is add this to this. So literally we're going to use an add node. So I'm going to press tab, add, run down to AI add, click there, and we'll put this into input one and this into input two. And then all I need to do is expand this take the R channel and connect it up to displacement. Okay, so let's see what our render looks like now. And there you go, there's our guy with all of his texturing XYZ details on there and his lovely logos all over his face. Uh, obviously, you know, these could be anything. They could be scars, they could be damage. They could just be the actual forms of the sculpt uh, that you have on your model. So it just shows how quickly you can add V-face details to an existing model. Thank you for watching. There's lots more help and tutorials on the Texturing XYZ V-face website and we're adding new content all the time. My name is Amy Ash. I'm currently Head of Characters at Axis Studios in Glasgow. Uh, again, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.